Radio Exterior de España. English Language Service. Hello and a warm welcome from Madrid. I'm Alison Hughes. Our studio manager tonight is Miguel Ángel León. Radio Exterior de España. Catalan Regional Chief Minister Arthur Mas has announced that the planned November 9 referendum on self-rule for Catalonia will not be held and will instead be replaced by an unofficial vote on the issue. The alternative he is presenting seeks to avoid direct confrontation with the government in Madrid which is fiercely opposed to the referendum and which has succeeded in having suspended by the constitutional court while the justices study the legality of the case. Artur Mas called the Spanish state a real and powerful adversary because, quote, it is denying us the possibility of voting and of being consulted as a nation. The alternative he is proposing would have no legal implications. He told a press conference this morning what it would consist of. The government of Catalonia maintains the goal of holding the consultation on November 9th of this year. What does that mean? It means there will be polling station ballots and ballot boxes. While Mr. Mas's alternative has all the trappings of a referendum, it will be a survey without any legal implication. There will be no official census of voters, nor will civil servants be called upon to man the stations, all of which would have been illegal. The question on the ballot will be the same as planned for the original referendum. Do you want Catalonia to be a state? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, the next question is, do you want that state to be independent? The leader of the CIU nationalist bloc, Mas, also admitted that cracks had begun to appear in the consensus between the pro-sovereignty parties. He also put on the table the possibility of calling plebiscite elections to confirm the result of the unofficial vote. The Spanish Prime Minister, Mariano Rajoy, responded to Mr. Mas's de declarations. Que no se celebre... If it's true that the referendum will not be held, that's excellent news. Spain is a democracy, an advanced country, and obeying the law is everyone's obligation, and even more so, those of us in government. The Deputy Prime Minister, Saraya Sanz de Santa Maria, said that I think the Catalan Chief Minister has to reflect, because he, his government, and his allies are in this situation precisely because they opened paths that went against the law before making new proposals. He should think a little. Precisamente por abrir caminos contrarios a la ley. Antes de hacer nuevas propuestas, creo que tendría que atender a estos casos. The Catalan leader also defended his proposition in Castilian Spanish. Es una consulta anticipada a la que puede ser la de This is a consultation prior to what could be called the definitive vote, and furthermore, it is a response to the way the Spanish state is behaving, trying to prohibit what cannot be prohibited, which is to be up to vote in a normal manner. Se le puede impedir a nadie, que es poder votar de forma normal. Health authorities in Spain have said that a nurse's assistant who is the first person to contract Ebola in Europe is still in serious condition but is improving. A German hospital, meanwhile, announced that a United Nations medical worker who was infected with Ebola while working in Liberia has died in Germany. The, the case of the Spanish nurse's assistant, Teresa Romero, it, like that of the nurse infected in the United States, has raised serious questions about how equipped hospitals are to cope with the Ebola outbreak. Spain's Minister of Health, Social Sciences, Services and Equality, Ana Mato, has attended a special session of the Senate to defend the government's handling of the Ebola virus. She said the government made the decision to repatriate the two infected missionaries working in Liberia and Sierra Leone with the, quote, absolute conviction that there was no risk of contagion for the public or personnel in the hospital. She also defended the guidelines followed in the treatment of the two missionaries who died from the virus despite the subsequent contagion of a nurse's aide who had contact with one of them. The opposition and much of the Spanish public have been critical of the government's handling of the crisis and many have called for the minister's resignation. Meanwhile, the health commissioner of the Madrid regional government, Javier Rodriguez, has apologized to the nurse's aide who was infected with the Ebola virus, Teresa Romero, and her husband, Javier Limon. Mr. Rodriguez acknowledged his unfortunate statements and says he understands the letter the nurse's husband sent him yesterday calling on him to resign. The Madrid health commissioner had sparked waves of indignation when he said Ms. Romero might have lied 
and when he blamed the contagion on her behavior. Ms. Romero had two contacts with one of the infected missionaries whom she treated. And finally, the deputy governor of the Bank of Spain, Fernando Restoy, has said that the state is entitled to demand reimbursement for the amounts improperly spent by the board members and executives of the Caja Madrid Savings and Loan. Some 86 people associated with the institution have been given credit cards for undeclared expenses on top of their expense account. And that's the news. North by Southwest with Nicholas Jackson is next. North by Southwest. A taste of the United Kingdom in today's Spain. On Radio Exterior. Radio Nacional de España. With the collaboration of the British Council. Another edition of North Bay Southwest, where we bring you the best of culture in Spain. This is Nicholas Jackson, with us controlling the sound is José Ramón Gómez España. In today's program, we speak to British poet Roger Magoff, who recently attended Hay Festival Segovia as a guest of the British Council. Hay Festival Segovia is an annual literary festival, now in its ninth edition, which features conversations, debates, concerts and art exhibitions in different venues around Segovia, a world heritage site. Award-winning poet, playwright, broadcaster and children's author, Roger McGough was born in Liverpool, a city with which he's maintained a lifelong relationship. He was a member of the music and poetry group The Scaffold between 1963 and 1973 and made his name as one of the so-called Liverpool poets, together with Adrian Henry and Brian Patton. Roger McGough has twice won the Signal Poetry Award and is the author of a number of plays. He's written for and presented programs on BBC Radio, including Poetry Please and Home Truths. His film work includes Kurt Mungo, BP and Me, for which he won a BAFTA Award, and he won the Royal Television Society Award for his science program, The Elements. His collected poems, bringing together over 40 years of work, was published in 2003, and his live poetry album, Lively, is available on CD. We'll be hearing a few excerpts from that CD later in the program. He was awarded a British OBE for services to poetry in 1997, and more recently a CBE, and was recently honoured with the freedom of the English city of Liverpool. Roger McGough's autobiography, Said and Done, was published in 2005. His latest adult poetry collection, It Never Rains, is to be published by Penguin this November. I started by asking Roger McGough how a contemporary poet spends his time. A typical year, for instance, would include, hopefully, some literary festivals. Literary festivals, a big feature now, will be due, and Roger writes a poet, I'm very grateful. Um, from the Hay Festivals, and I travel a lot um, abroad. Great, thanks to the British Council, thanks to the Hay Festival, great. Uh, I've always been a great friend of those. I remember years ago, but what about funniest things? With the Liverpool poets, we went to Germany on tour, and uh, they, were, they went to Cologne, and the member of the office in Cologne uh, said to Aachen and Munich, the Liverpool poets, can we make some posters, please, and in the newspapers and so forth. So, so when we arrived on our first day, said Aachen, and all the newspapers said, announced the arrival of the little poor poets. <laughs> that's great, too. Uh, all over Germany, people were giving us money during that. Um, so that's been a great thing. So I, the past I would love you know, to get something involving going abroad. And this year, in Mantua and Dubai festivals and so forth. Most of it, though, is bread and butter stuff, and this will be doing theatre readings because you don't get much money from publishing poetry, as you know. Do you know the average writer in England, the average income per year is eight to twelve thousand pounds? Quite low. So you don't get much from the publishing, but from performing, get paid as a theatre evening. Also, I do push, please, and um, occasional voiceovers. But my day-to-day -day is generally involving sitting down, trying to write. Is poetry a dying art, or is it still popular amongst younger people? What I've noticed over the past few years is that there's a great uh, number of young people now doing poetry. I mean, there's poets like Kate Tempest, who's won, nearly won the Mercury Prize, and very well thought of. 